whole with the whole Austin St. John. I wouldn't even fight Austin St. John now because he, you know, that fight could have happened as a warm up fight for me. But he he never called. You know, he says he's a fighter. He tells everybody, all the fans, you know, I'm an underground fighter. I mean, you guys know the story. I've been saying it for years. Yeah. But if you tell your fans something, you need to live it. If I say I'm a fighter, then I need to be that fighter for my fans. I can't, I'm not going to just lie to my fans and tell them, oh, I'm a fighter. And lie, that's what Austin's done. You know, he's always, he's always lied. That's why, I always, that's why that always thing between me and him that I always want to fight him because he says he's a fighter. He says he kills people in the ring. So, you know. Whoa, I mean, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he says he kills people in the ring? Austin St. John, yeah. He said that on set before. He said not only, not only did that, you know, he's like, I don't fight no more. And the reason why I don't fight no more is because I killed somebody on the ring. And everyone's like, Amy, Kim, you know, Amy, Kimberly, you know, David Yost, they were all there listening. And we're all just kind of snickering, like, sure, he killed somebody in the ring. And he's like, and then you know what? It was the guy's birthday. I felt <laughs> horrible about it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you don't uh, think so he was just him, joking? No, heck no, he wasn't joking. You don't know Austin St. John, too. You don't know him. <laughs> you know, come on. You, you know, he goes on Morphicon on, on the, the first Morphicon thing and tells people he's fighting again. He's never fought before in the ring. He's not joking. I think I remember. No, I think I remember because like I was at the panel and I I think I remember like he, he said that he's doing, you know, like being a paramedic and whatever. And he's thinking <laughs> about, you know, getting. Yeah, but he's always been whatever. thinking about it. That's the problem. That's why he shouldn't even think about it. Look, I don't think about it. I do it. You know, it's one of those things that when I don't think about it, I'm training it. You know, and look, when a guy, you know, has a little shave cut on his face and he comes in on set and the, the show's not even aired yet. And then he's like, they're like, you're late. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was driving, and I saw this guy beat this little girl. And, man, I pulled over and was like, hey, don't be hitting your little girl. And I spin sidekick the guy through the window. Oh, the window broke. And then the cops came. And then I went down to Culver City Police Station. And then when I was down there, all the police were like, hey, dude, are you that guy from the TV show? And then I got mobbed. And then I was signing autographs. That's the reason why I'm late. And my thing was... Okay, Austin, our show hasn't even aired on TV yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not aired yet, but, you know, all the cops know we're, you know, filming down here in Culver City, so, you know, they all recognize me. No, they didn't. These are stories I've heard for years and years. Anybody who knows Austin Zane John, he's a liar, he's a compulsive liar, he lies about everything, and I don't care what he lies about, just don't lie about my livelihood. I'm a martial artist, I've been in martial arts my whole entire life since I was four, so when you start lying about martial arts, it, it, I take it personal. You know, I, I take that personal. You know, martial art people are not supposed to be cocky and arrogant. And hey, I could beat this person. That's all I've heard for years from that guy. I mean, him gotten physical fights on set before. Physical fights. Yeah. I mean, it was like you know, messing around and start sparring, and it's then it turned physical. You know. So I mean, here's things where. Okay, you fight, you know, in Saudi Arabia is what he told me last. He's got a contract at some overseas thing that he, it's a fight contract and he can't fight in the USA, so whatever. The point is, I'm done with the whole Austin St. John thing. I think people can really see if he was a fighter, he'd be in shape. He's, he's so out of shape right now. And that's just, you know, I refuse to be like that. I, I mean, look, we've been a superhero, you know, for many kids around the world. And that's what I continue to be right now, is as I continue to be a hero. Not a superhero, but like I want to meet people, I'm nice to people. You know, people are like, oh, that's cool. And, you know, I work out and I'm in shape. I keep my body in shape. This is stuff that I love to do. This is like my world. That's why when I took it so personal and he was like, oh, I'm a fighter. And don't even, don't even say you think about fighting. Because if you're thinking about fighting, I mean, one of my trainers offered him like 25 grand to fight me. $25,000 for one fight, and he'd even call back. He even had the decency to call back. Or, don't, you know, can't even go on YouTube and say, no, I ain't fighting you, or a phone call, or a text, because he's got my number, hey, man, I don't want to fight, or whatever. You know, if I don't want to do something, I'll tell someone. You know, if I'm hurt in a fight, and I got hit, like when Mac hit me in the jaw, did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt, man. You know, did I continue fighting? Yeah, I continue fighting. Was my face swelling up? Yeah, it was swelling up two times the size, but... You know, that's the fight game. If I'd be, anyone else would sit here and go, no, nah, that didn't hurt. That didn't do nothing. You know, I'm not like that. I'm really, I tell my feelings how it is. So sometimes I get myself in trouble because I speak my feelings. Well, but I, I just can can't see. hide my feelings. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what? You know I what happened? can't like... hide them. I mean, then, then I'm going to be fake. And Hollywood's already full of fake people. Mm, so, it is. So, you know, yes. Hollywood's just full of fake people. You get people like, hey, Lisa, so nice to meet you. And they're like, blah, blah, blah. It's like when I, when I tell someone, hey, it's nice to meet you or anything I can do to help you. I really mean that. I don't just say that for any other reason, you know? 
So that's why I'm always on interviews and talking to people. I got a lot of good friends out there that I've met, you know, in the entertainment business and in the in the main world that I'm continue, you know, help promote the radio station. I don't care if they have 200 listeners or 100. I'm there because they were there for me, you know. Yeah. So I'm there for them. So that's my oh. whole thing. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Because like, you know, on, on real talk, you know, I remember. I forgot what panel it was. I think when you first mentioned the Austin thing and a lot of people were taken aback because you were saying, you know, like all the stuff that you're telling me now, like you were saying so much stuff about Austin and yeah. they were like, they were like, oh, wow, that, that sounds kind of mean. That sounds kind of. Yeah, I know. You know. I know people. I know. But, you know, man, it boils up, you know, for, you know, I had nothing to, I mean, Amy talk, you know, we email each other and, you know, Dave, I got nothing to say about him. I got nothing to say about any actor, except that I've heard from months and months and months and years and years and years about this whole fight thing. And it just it just got under my skin and went, like this whole, okay, look, TMZ, I got interviewed by TMZ. TMZ said, well, I like to challenge anybody in a fight. And I mm-hmm. said, well, I'm not really. You know, my manager was on the other line. I had no one. I'm not going to challenge anybody in a fight. I'm really not like that. But then we had a, you know, Van Damme was fighting. I said, yeah, I heard he was fighting. And I met him in my movie premiere. He did blow me off in my movie from here. So would you fight me? I'll fight him. I fight. I fight Van Damme. No problem. You know, I mean, it'd be a good fight. It would both make money, or the fans want to see it. And then it just blew up everywhere. J. Stan Frank challenges Van Damme. And, yeah, you know, it was... But uh, it's out there, and it's it'd be great to hear something from him again. Maybe from his people to say, no, you know, this is entertainment business. The people, my fans, want to see me fight him. They'd be like, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome, dude. That'd be the biggest fight. Like, I mean, people at my karate school and just tons of people. He challenged a 36-year-old guy who's an Olympic kickboxer. I'm 36, so people are like, oh, you're mean. He's old. It's like, look, he's 49. He's the one that said he wants to fight. Herschel Walker's 47, and he got a strike force deal. Mm -hmm. So age is not the issue. You know, if he wants to do it, let him do it, thinking, cool. If he wants to fight, I'll, you know, be a good warm-up fight for me. We both battle each other and make a little TV show out of it, kind of blew up everywhere, and people were like, oh, you have a, you know, you got to take back that 15-year grudge. I don't hold grudges against anyone. I don't, you know, I'm, I forgive everyone. I forgive, but can you forget stuff? Not really. And I left my movie premiere because Van Damme was so arrogant. Really? I, and I shouldn't have walked oh. out, but I just didn't want to be around them. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be here. I just want to leave. You know, because Hollywood's so fake and full of people. All you need is fake people. And that's yeah. why I'm saying Austin's fake. When I first started, when I first, no, when I first started Power Rangers, honestly, okay, his name was, that's his real name. His name's not Austin St. John. That's a stage name. So yeah. when I came, I was real nice. Hey, nice to meet you. And, you know, and Jason Darby was on a show who played Skull. Yeah. And his yeah. name was, so his name was already on the door. Then it said Jason Darby on his door. Well, here comes Jason Frank. First time I met him, I went to shake his hand. He went in his room and slammed the door, then changed and signed to Austin St. John. And I was like. Oh, huh, nice to meet you too. Right in the very beginning was like, you know, it was just, it was horrible. Table reads, everything we would do, we'd read table reads, my line would be like, it's morphing time. That's my line. He can't say that line. It's like, I got a family to feed. This is my job. You take it really serious, man. Come on, just say your line. So these are years of years of things that, that built up, you know. So I had an organization who was going to pay me a lot of money to fight him. So I thought it'd be a good chance for him to make money. You know, because he needs money. So I thought, hey, 25 grand to fight me would be a good thing. And, you know, never heard back from him. So I guess I just, I'm the type of guy where I'd like to hear, hey, um, you know, all that stuff I talked for years. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem, man. Best friends. Mm, but when you don't say yeah. anything and you just ignore me and dodge me and dodge me, it's just, you know, I don't have respect for that person because I just feel like, you know, you're, you ignore me and you don't answer questions, you know, and I think that's anybody if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband and a wife and they keep dodging you and never, you never hear those words, Hey, I'm sorry for the, you know, what I said or whatever, then, you know, you just kind of hold it in. Yeah. So I'm not that type of person. I like to hear people, you know, say, Hey, you know, or you misunderstood me or I never said that or, you know, whatever. But, um, but yeah, when I, when you do, it does look like that though, when you talk about someone and you don't hear the other side of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because like, I mean, because I mean, to be honest, it, it was like, oh, wow, he said a lot of stuff. And then like, and yeah. there's like another panel. Oh, he said a lot of stuff. And yeah. so like a lot of people were like, Jason, he looks so arrogant. And he looks this. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and, that was and only uh, but, here's, but, but here's my defense of that. Okay. A lawyer once told me this. He said, you know, when you talk to people, there's always two sides of the story. You got one side and another side. He says, you know, he goes, uh, 
wife got on the stage, on the stand, and the judge, you know, the, the lawyer was talking to the wife and said, hey, answer my questions, yes or no. Did your husband hit you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Get off the stage. I want, oh, his husband, he's beating his wife. Blah, blah, blah. The husband gets on the, on the stand. The, the lawyer says, did you hit your wife? Yes or no? He says, yes, I did, Your Honor. You know, and or the judge or whatever, or the lawyer. And then he says, well, next question is, why did you hit your wife? And he says, well, I hit my wife on the back because she, she was choking on a chicken bone, so I saved her life. <laughs> oh, you know, it's like, here you go. You don't hear two sides of the story. You only hear one side. You instantly yeah. start thinking, Oh, you know, and I know Austin hasn't said nothing about me because he just, you know, whatever. Even but, if, you know. even when people at PMC were like asking like, okay, did you have any beef with Jason and uh, you, Jason? Wow. Too many Jasons, but you, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like, I think one of the questions was if, um, if you would like, if you would get in the ring, like if you would, like duke it out or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you know, I think we would be too friendly to like, you know, you know, do that. Yeah, what I mean, have you. Well, so, it's always like that though, but. Here's an example, like, I do a lot of brick breaking. You can go on, you know, you, you, my karate schools, I got demos. You can go look at all my stuff. I do a lot of brick breaking. So I was talking to these guys about breaking bricks. I'm, like, really excited about this. And he's like, yeah, I'd break two or three center blocks like this. And there's this an impossible way. So I'm like, okay. I just let it go. Ian, who was one of my stunt doubles, Ian was the Green Ranger. If you ever get a hold of Ian, he'll tell you how Austin was. He called him out on it. He said, hey, I got two bricks right now. Here, break them like that. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. You know, just always... I guess when you're telling a story, he's always the one to butt in to, to top your story. And it was just like so annoying. Everyone from the set, you know what? Maybe never had enough cojones to tell him how I feel. Because everyone complained to me about Austin. Oh, he's this, he's that. But when he was there, oh, no one said nothing. Mm. Everyone's all quiet. It's like, yeah. It, why don't people tell him how they, how they really feel? Well, they don't because people aren't like that. You know what they rather do? is be nice to your face and be two-faced. I'm not like that. Either yeah. I like you or I don't like you. I can't be two-faced to you. I can't be like, hey, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> now, look, if I was at a convention with Austin and Morphicon, or, cool, what's up? My first question is, did you not hear what I said on YouTube? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I heard. How come you didn't get back to me? <laughs> well, I just, okay, well, we're, we're going to settle this now? I mean, you're going to let me know how you, you don't want to fight? Okay, good, we're friends. Shake my hand. We're friends. We'll make up. That's it. But I just hate when people dodge me. Mm. You know, I really do. I mean, I got his cell number. I call you, Rich Austin St. John. It's his number. Mm. I mean, I leave messages. I text him. I'm like, hey, dude, I won't hurt you. It'll be three <laughs> rounds. You know, I mean, I'll give you $25,000. I had a promoter, a big promoter, ready to do this fight. And I was thinking, you know, he's paying him twenty five. We can make a lot of money. A lot of fans would love to see it. But, yes. you know, just I guess the respect of not even calling me back or texting me to say, leave me alone, anything. Mm. You know, I mean, it just it just kind of bothered me, and it made me feel like, well, he really has something now against me. Obviously, I mean, you know, so and I, I guess I would too. If I was him, I would hate myself too. But you know, but if I was him, you wouldn't hear me unanswered for a whole year. I thought to show up at that convention and go, "Hey, bud, what's up? Let's do this right now. Let's make a little ring." Hey, who? How many fans want to see this happen? And I would go out there, but to see, you have to know how I am. Okay, look at my fighters. Look how much stuff Mac has talked about me about Power Rangers and go back to TV and look what I did after my fight. I hug Mac. Right now, I'm friends with Mac. Okay, mm. I see him at local gyms. Look what I did with Chris Rose. As much as all this stuff was going on Chris Rose, you can watch my video. I hug Chris Rose afterwards. I even talked about him on my Facebook. Everybody was like, you know, Chris, you're Eric. You didn't lose weight. You're this, you're that. And you know what I said on my Facebook? Go back and look at the pages. I said, hey, guys, give Chris a break. He's a true warrior. He went out there. He lost weight. He did this fight. Thank you, Chris. So mm -hmm. to say that, mm -hmm. how could mm -hmm. you even like compare to be arrogant? Yeah. You know what arrogance is? Dude, I beat your butt. You get off my Facebook. That's <laughs> arrogance. If you go back, <laughs> honestly, if you look at my Facebook pages of all those people that talk stuff and one guy, how are you living off this whole Power Ranger? I'm very nice to everybody. And it's not, it's not for, um, it's not for show. I'll, I'll tell them what I feel like on my Facebook. It's my Facebook page, but I'm, I, it's like, it's how I am. You know, even afterwards, Chris Rose emailed that he's got knee surgery and all that. I say, hey, good luck, man. He said, good luck in your career. You're talented. And show all those haters and all those doubters what you're all about. You know, and, and um, so I'm, I'm, you know, to, to go in a thing and someone that wanted to kill you and then actually hug the guy afterwards, that's how I'd be with Austin. I'd fight him, hug him afterwards, and we go on our merry way. Oh, okay. That's the entertainment business. So that's yeah. what I would do with Van Damme, too. So I think I proved that to everybody. You know, I mean, a guy dresses up like a turtle, 
And afterwards, <laughs> they got a hug and saying, hey, good job. I mean, you know, I mean, he's told me pretty much on the walkout video that he's going to knock me out and I need to go back to Hollywood. So if I was arrogant and mean, and I'd be like, what? what? You're going to what? And afterwards, I'd be like, oh, I won. I'm not like that. I'm not like, if, if you know the real Jason David Frank, I'm not like arrogant and all that other stuff. I might come off. You know, I mean, I know the the AFO, I just came out of surgery, and I'll tell you what, the only reason I went to that AFO show was for my fans. I came the night out of surgery. There's no one that will stick to an appearance. They let me out of the contract. Karen's like, if you can't make it, I understand. I wasn't obligated for no money. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello? Can you lose him? Can you hear me still? Oh, okay, yeah. Now we can. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. But, um... I was, you know, I was obligated to those fans that were there to see me, and I couldn't let those fans down. So that's why I went the day after surgery. I was, I felt horrible. Yeah, you know, I was I'm surprised. Pain pills, you. I was surprised. You know? seriously. Yeah, I was on pain pills. I was, you know, and I tried to make it happen and try to make it fun and try to keep my personality going. My arm was killing me. But, you know, they dug in it with a knife and pulled muscles and tendons everywhere, and I had mm. stitches and, you know, so. But I was there, and that just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think that shows again, what type of person I am, too. I didn't do it for money. I didn't do it for anything else. I mean, I run my own businesses. I got my own clothing company, Jesus and Tap. I do financially well. I don't need money. It's not about that. It's about, I guess, just um, maybe reaching out to my fans now and trying to trying to make everyone happy. And I guess I always try to do that. And sometimes it's really hard on myself because I, I don't say no to anybody. So sometimes I'm running around and doing stuff, you know, a lot. And then you might catch me on a bad day and, you know, I might say something bad about Austin. I don't know. Oh. But I'm, pretty much, I'm pretty much done talking about him, though. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm done about it. You know, so at conventions and stuff. But I will say that if I ever did see him, I will ask him on, on the panel. I'm not going to punch him in the face and be like, oh, you... It's no, it's no need for that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just. hey, man, I challenge you to a fight. It would have been great. How many fans would like to see it? We would. We would put him on the spot. He'd be like, yeah, but well, you know, he'll make another excuse up that he's got some oversi- overseas contract that he can't fight. And I'd be like, okay, I understand. But yeah, but he's a pro- I mean, he's a paramedic. I mean, I mean, you can you can give him some credit for like you know saving people's lives on a daily basis. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. No, I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, man, he's yeah. a paramedic. He's doing good. But I think that you know when you why not go off that then? Why not why not just say hey look, this is who I am. I'm Austin St. No, forget Austin St. John. That's your stage man. I'm just, I'm a paramedic. I saved lives. Cool. Why do you have to go on a whole story about like, you know, even afterwards, well, I'm fighting, go ahead and just drop it. That, that's, that's the old part of your life that you've never done, that you're never going to do. So when other fighters hear that, it bothers people. It mm-hmm. doesn't bother fans, but for me, it's like, man, just, he's always been insecure about himself. He's never been confident and comfortable with who he is in his own skin. I would have been like, yeah, my name's <laughs> That's just the way it is. I don't care if Jason Frank comes on. I don't care if Jason Narvi, you can call on another 10 people. You know, I mean, I'm who I am. And I never acted like a star of the show. That's why I ended up becoming the star of the show. I never wanted to be the star of the show. I never asked for that part. I just was in my own little world. And I'm just saying that, you know, some people should just be happy with who they are and don't say anything. That's where all the conflict came from. Mm. You know, so it's just one of those things. So, yeah, I do give him credit. He's a paramedic. He saves lives. That's awesome. I mean, you know, so, I mean, I don't think he's happy with it. That's why you always got to make up, well, I'm thinking about this and thinking about that and, I'm um, Stallone's double and body double and just all this stupid stuff he always says. It's just annoying. It's just be who you are. You know, I am who I am. If you don't like me, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I am what I am. I, who, I, after this, I'm going to go back and talk to my Facebook people. And, you know, I mean, I, I am what I am. I, there's no, I can't hide who I am, you know. So yeah. when I talk about, you know, the, the talk about I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight, I was training, and then I got injured, and I'm like, God, and how many more Morphicons or, you know, or these cons can I go to saying, I'm going to fight, it just it sounds too stupid, I've been training, I'm like, I need to fight now, that's why my career, I have to get going, mm-hmm. call the promoters, and I'm like, God, fight, 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 that's why I'm fighting back to back, because I want to do something out there. Yeah.